All right, we're gonna review our normal calculations real quick, and then we're gonna do an example together. So we'll recall that the kind of standard way to do a normal, a calculation of a probability from a normal distribution is to convert things to a z-score, which gives us the standard normal distribution. Um, and we, last time we used the example of, uh, we'll just say adult, adult, we'll do male heights. And we said that these are normally distributed. So that squiggly line means it follows a normal distribution with a mean of 69.4 inches. and a standard deviation of 4.7 inches. And then we can ask certain things of this. We can do two things primarily. We can say, what's the probability that say, um, given this distribution of heights, right? So here's our, our distribution of heights. We've got our mean right here, 69.4. And then we've got our standard deviation right there. Um, Given this distribution of heights, what's the probability say that someone is, uh, we'll say 72 inches, right? Um, or we could write it, I guess, what's the probability that height and we could write it two ways. We could say less than or equal to, or we could say greater than um, a particular thing, right? So we'll just say, what's the probability that we're less than or equal to 70 inches? We'll just say 70. Um, and to calculate this, ultimately, we're interested in looking at the area. Up to that value. So if that mean is 69.4, here's going to be 70, right? And then this probability that the height is less than or equal to 70 is simply the area under this curve. Um, which is also the cumulative distribution function, right? So cumulative distribution function, big F of X, it looks like this. And for a given value of X, it gives us the probability that we're less than or equal to that value. And the function that, or the symbology that we use for the normal CDF is this big phi. And we would just say, okay, so, so phi, uh, but this is also the CDF of Z. So this is F of Z. Therefore, we have to convert this number into this kind of standard normal variant. And so remember that to do that, we do Z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. So in this case, z is equal to 70 minus our mean of 69.4 all over our standard deviation of 4.7. So we'll calculate that real quick and I'll have that number in front of me. Not gonna be a very big value because it's pretty close to the mean, right? 69.4. Divided by 4.7. So we get a Z value of 0 0.13. And that's the same as if this is now Z and this is our PDF of the standard normal distribution centered about zero. And then now we're saying, what's the probability that um, we're less than or equal to that particular Z value, which is 0.13. So that's standardizing it for us. Um, or the standard, standard normal variable, we'll just call it the standard normal variable.
Now we can go and we can plug in this value into the fee function and either use our table A1 in our book or the one that I gave you, which is a little bit different, but same idea, or we can do P norm in R. So this is um, basically the CDF function in R and we plug in that standard normal variate 0.13 and it will give us the area up to that point, right? Which would be probably just a little bit above 0.5 since we're not that, that far away. So the, the inverse way of doing this then would be say, um, what is the 95th percentile height? What is the height below which 95% of the observations or probability occurs? You could pick anything here. We could say, what's the 60th percentile? What's the 50th percentile, right? 50th percentile is also known as the median. And to do this calculation, it's just essentially we're using the same formulas. We just do it a little bit in reverse. We say phi of some Z value is equal to this cumulative probability of 0.95. And to do this then, okay, so what Z value is associated with 0.95? Well, now we can go into our book and say, okay, let's look at that table and find 0.95 as the cumulative probability. 0.95 is the cumulative probability. And that gives us a Z value. So we can go table A1. Look up Z value for cumulative probability is equal to 0 0.95. And then, so Z is equal to 1.65 for that cumulative probability of 0.95. Um, we can also use the function Q norm in R. Q norm 0 0.95, you plug in the cumulative probability and it will give you the Z value. So that's just easier instead of kind of looking up in a table. So the next step then is we wanna find the height. So right now we have a Z score. How do we convert that to a height? Well, we just go back up to that Z score equation. And now we can say X minus mu over sigma is equal to 1.65. We can plug in the values that we know and solve for X. So X is equal to 1.65 sigma plus mu. Plug in sigma, plug in mu, and now we can calculate our X value. So that's the, the inverse way to do it. Question of what is the 95th percentile? Could that also be worded as um, like, what is the height of the tallest uh, five percent? Yeah, and, and so we could say, so what's the 95th percentile height? And we could say, what is the height, um, I guess you would say above which, 5% of the population falls. Yeah, it's just the opposite way of saying that. So in this case, this would be um, find X such that um, you would say one minus V of Z is equal to 0 0.05, okay? All right, so let's go do an example together. This is one from your book. And here is our example. I'm just gonna type it out real quick. We have, storm drain system, so stormwater system for a community 
can handle up to 1.5 million gallons per day. Maybe this is like a combined storm sewer system, right? Um, you got like a certain sewage volume or, or flow rate coming through. And then it, if it rains on top of that, then that goes back into this storm sewage system and can overwhelm it. Um, unfortunately, these exist in many, many cities. Rainfall totals um, in a given day follow a normal distribution. with mean is equal to 1.2 million gallons per day. And standard deviation is equal to 0 0.4 million gallons per day. And maybe instead of just rainfall, it'd be like rainfall plus sewage, I guess, <laughs> the, the normal flow. Um, Cause that's, that's a lot of rain, right? Okay, so here's, here's kind of our setup and we'll say X is our random variable and it follows a normal distribution of 1.2 uh, with a mean and then a standard deviation of 0 0.4. And this is million gallons per day for our units. Okay, so the first question then is, what is the probability that this system will overflow in a given day? So let's look at that. And let's think about how to write this out. So we're saying, what's the probability that X, our random variable is what? So we'll go back up here. It can handle up to 1.5 million gallons per day. So if it's overflowing, then what happens? X is greater than 1.5. Okay, and how does our fee, so we said it's normally distributed, so we know we're gonna be using that fee function, right? What, what does that fee function tell us? If we plug in a, a Z value into it, it tells us the probability, it probably, the less than, right? And so we're gonna rewrite this as one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to 1.5, right? because phi can give us this, this value right here. Okay, so then we can write this as one minus phi of, we have to convert this to Z, right? So we're gonna do 1.5 minus the mean of 1.2 divided by the standard deviation of 0 0.4. So this is our Z value. Z goes into the phi function. Um, we'll calculate that out and we get one minus B of 0 0.75. Go to our table or what's the function in R? It's P norm. And actually I've got P norm pulled up right here. So we're gonna just do, we got R pulled up right here. So we're just gonna plug that in. So I'm gonna do P norm 0 0.75, press enter. So it gives me 0 0.773. And then finally we get our probability, which is about 0 0.23. So given this setup, right, we have a 23% chance of flooding or of overflow on a given day. That's pretty gross. We need to do something about that. 
Um, I'll show you in R, there's another way we can do this. So instead of converting to the Z score, we can do this. We can do P norm 1.5. And then we have to tell R what the mean is. Mean is equal to 1.2. And then the standard deviation is equal to 0 0.4. So R by default will assume you're doing the standard normal variance. So if I go question mark P norm, then it says, as default, mean is zero and standard deviation is one, okay? So if I tell it otherwise though, whenever you kind of see this, this means that R automatically plugs those values in for those parameters. It does that for you unless you tell it otherwise. So now I can do P norm 1.5, mean is equal to, um, 1.2 and then standard deviation is equal to 0 0.4. And then I get that same value back. So I can just go back and do the whole calculation in R, I just do one minus and then I get my 0.23. Okay. All right, the next thing we'll do is we'll do one more thing here. And this is kind of an inverse. So find the probability that the storm volume, actually it's not the inverse. Find the probability that the storm volume in a given day will be between 1.0 and 1.6. million gallons per day. So maybe now we're starting to think about planning or like, okay, we've got the system, it's not doing well. We wanna size a new treatment system such that it can handle some range of flows, right? We could, we could they gave us a range right here, but we could also say maybe we wanna handle up to a certain percentage of flows or certain percentile flows, which we'll do in a second. Um, so let's write this out. This is the probability that our X is between 1.0 and 1.6. And then we can um, go straight to our phi function. So first we're gonna plug in 1.6 because we'll just draw it with the cumulative distribution function. So if this is 1.6 and this is 1.0, if we want the probability in between these two values, then we can calculate the cumulative distribution or the cumulative probability at 1.6 and then subtract out the cumulative probability up to 1.0, right? So this, say this is like, I don't know, we'll find out what it is, but 85% um, or something like that. That's the cumulative probability up to that point. So we're just gonna subtract out what's behind 1.0. Got it, okay. I think, we're, I think we're all on the same page now. So 1.6 minus 1.2 over 0 0.4 minus B of 1.0 minus 1.2 all over 0 0.4. We're gonna get a negative Z value there, right? That means we're below the mean. So this ends up being 1.0 minus B of 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5. And then we can look those, those values up and um, we get, well, actually, you know, I'm just gonna write it out. We can do P norm. 1.0 minus 0 0.5. So let's do that real quick.
and we get 0 0.53. Okay, so we have about a 50% probability that our flows fall between those values. All right, last thing we'll do. We're gonna find the um, daily flow rate or daily flow, yeah, we'll just say flow rate. Um, below which 90% of flows occur, also known as the 90th percentile. And this, this would be a kind of a design question, right? Or a risk question. We could say, we want the system to not overflow 90% of the time. This would probably be associated with a guideline regulation where um, you could look at the loading of bacteria to your creeks if your system, your storm, your combined sewer system is overflowing and uh, total maximum daily load is established for a creek. And this is associated with the Clean Water Act. And so that they do a modeling study, they do some sampling, and they say, well, well, for this creek to meet whatever standards we have of it, we want people to be able to fish and wade in it. Maybe not swim because it's an urban stream, but some sort of human contact. Therefore, we need the concentrations to be below this limit with this kind of frequency. So um, you would do the modeling studies and observational studies to figure out how many times can this sewer system overflow. In a, in a given year to meet, meet those standards, um, given the volumes that come out of the, the system when it, when it overflows, given the concentrations. So you do all that work and you say, okay, we think that if we design the system to handle 90% um, of the flows, then and only overflow 10% of the time, we'll meet that regulation. I bet you it's probably much higher because in reality, it probably would be. Okay, so now we're doing this inverse problem and we're finding the, um, so this is basically said, so find X such that B of Z is equal to 0 0.9. All right, and so this is, um, so we go, go back to our Z, so we need to find First, we need to find Z, right? And we could look up, we could look up this probability, this cumulative probability in the table, or we could do Q norm 0 0.9. And that's gonna give us Z 0 0.9. So we'll do that in R, Q norm. So that's 1.281. So 1.281 is gonna be equal to our X, 90, 90 percentile X minus the mean of 1.2 divided by the standard deviation of 0 0.4. And so we can do that, carry out the calculation and solve for that. So um, X 0 0.9 is equal to 1.281 times 0 0.4 plus 1.2. Levi, did you get an answer? 1.71, okay. So that is our answer. That is the design that, um, flow rate that we would work towards in our design. And I can draw that out too. If we had our cumulative distribution function, We know that we're looking at the 90th percentile cumulative distribution, and we're using the phi function or the Q norm function 
to find that x value. 